Hello YouTube. Alright, today I got a bit of a project. As you can see, I got some VHS tapes, some old family movies. And whatever the hell this thing is, whatever the hell this one is, it's completely blank. I'll find out. Today, what I'm going to do is use a VCR to digitize these things with the Dell. And the Dell's sitting right next to my server, so... I'll be able to transfer these over to the server once they're done. And I just have your plain old ordinary Sony Hi-Fi VCR. This thing's probably from 2005, 2007, sometime around then. I got a router on top of it. And what I've done is I plug the VCR in. I'm using just a plain coax cable. I have a TV tuner in this computer, and I plug the coax cable into the back. Let me get a light on that. The back here, I just put the coax cable into the TV tuner there, and that's what I'm going to use to transfer it because I don't have any RCA cables, and frankly, using one cable is just less mess. Plus, it's VHS, who cares? <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is turn on the computer. This floppy drive isn't plugged in, by the way, so, yeah. There's the Dell. I just got the uh, RAM last, I got the RAM a little bit uh, earlier this week for this thing. I ordered a one gigabyte stick of DDR2800, DDR just one gig for this baby, because that's all it needs to become a useful workstation. And it's running like a, a respect, it's, it's, it's a respectable Windows XP machine. It's got a gig of RAM. When I bought this thing, it had 512, so a gig is actually an upgrade. All right, let's log in here. I don't use a password because that's kind of pointless on this thing. What I probably should do is get an audio cord to plug this, these little crappy speakers on the monitor in so I can at least hear what's going on. But first, I'll just show you what, uh, what all is going on here. Komodo is yelling at me. Warning, your antivirus might be out of date. That's because I haven't had the computer on in like two weeks. <laughs> It'll update itself and it'll be just fine. Update. What about the program? This remote doesn't work. It's not updated. There we go. Turns out a vast version 6.0 is out. <laughs> so. I probably need to update it on this computer. Now, while that's happening, I'll show you what I have installed on here. All right, obviously, I'm using a vast and Komodo firewall. Your virus definition has been updated. That's nice. And what I have on here is I got Adobe Audition 1.5 for uh, audio work. Adobe Audition 1.5 is amazing, amazing program. I got Audacity. Uh, just in case I need to use that. That's these, this Aver Media Center stuff comes with uh, the TV tuner card. Go away. Uh, I got FileZilla on here so I can transfer some of the videos via FTP to, I don't know, another computer or even a server. Media Player Classic because that comes with the uh, K-Lite codex. Nero Smart Start. Now I put Nero 7 on here so that I can burn DVDs of the videos that I transfer. And also, Nero has a, uh, a wave editor, a sound editor, that is perfect for mixing down tracks from records and such. QuickTime for compatibility. TeamViewer for the lols. Vegas, Sony Vegas 7.0 uh, for uh, converting and editing certain bits of video. VLC for playback. WinRAR for archiving. Google Chrome for web browser, and a Revo uninstaller in case I want to completely get rid of something that causes a mess in the registry. And I need to restart the computer, so, lol. Okay, what we're going to do is just get cue the tape up and get it ready. Alright, stick the tape in there. Now to stop it.
rewind it all the way. All right. Now, the way I do it can be done by just about anybody that has a TV tuner in their computer. At least one that accepts composite or uh, uh, coax. So we're going to go into Windows Movie Maker. Yeah, I know, Windows fucking Movie Maker. But this does work. This is how I used to do it all the time, and it worked perfect. Windows Movie Maker for XP actually picks up at these uh, TV tuners. This is why I use XP on here. Input source is the TV tuner, except I want that to be a composite, so. Why is Sigmatel? Meh. So it looks like what I have to do is actually hook up the VCR into the input of the actual sound card of this computer. Balls. Okay, what I did is I ended up getting a coax cable. This is what a coax cable looks like. Back of the VCR into the TV tuner in the back of the computer. And I had to take... I'd go to the audio outputs on the back and feed that into line in in the back of the computer which is usually a blue port now the TV tuner, now I have to configure the TV tuner in Movie Maker you do it like this, you click uh, make sure it's not TV tuner click configure go to the TV tuner then you can actually change the channel Now this could be three or four. I'm going to put it on three. And see what happens when I turn the thing on. I got a response from line in. So, uh, I don't know, let's call this Muller. Family home movies. And this is from this is stuff off of uh, film that was transferred when, when my dad was young. All right. Now I prefer to actually have a consistent type of quality, so I do. Uh, high quality video large and it's variable so I usually do that hit next and the thing should think about it for a second and there you have it now let's see if this actually plays or does anything And you do actually see something on the screen there. Yep, there it goes. And that. I'm going to rewind that, obviously. Create clips, I uncheck because that gets really annoying. Okay, we'll start the capture. Here it goes. There we go. And that is how to capture off of a VCR with Windows Movie Maker. Now you could use other programs to do this, but I prefer Windows Movie Maker just because it's easy to do this. As crap as a program is, as Windows Movie Maker is, it, this does work. These are scenes from another time. This is... <laughs> and there's... And there's another time, the 1950s, as far as I know. I think this is the, either the 50s or the 40s. I
This is most likely either the late 40s, early 50s, as far as I know. And, and don't be alarmed if the video lags like this, it usually does. But as you can see by the size of the video file, it's still capturing. It just looks like crap as it's being fed in. So, this is what I do to feed it in. And I literally export the video as it is. I don't edit it in Windows Movie Maker. I just use Windows Movie Maker to do the capturing part. Use the raw file that this thing captured and use Vegas to, to uh, edit it. But this is just a good way to get the video inside the computer so you can manipulate, manipulate it. Like I said, I don't like Windows Movie Maker. It just serves a purpose, which is capturing video from the, capture, from the uh, TV tuner in there. And this is over coax cable. So there you have it. Now I got a lot more tapes to do, so hooray. Now, Sony, Sony Vios had something called Gigapocket, which made this process ten times easier, but unfortunately, I'm using a Dell, so I have no choice but to use something other than Gigapocket, like Movie Maker or Vegas or something. I prefer using Movie Maker to capture the video in just because it's easier, as I said before, but again, I'm rambling. And this is a noisy VCR. Whoa. Uh -huh. Anyhow. Now that this is all done, what I'm going to do is just click finish. And the video should uh, hurt her right into Windows Movie Maker. See the hard drive? Just meh. It takes its time. <laughs> Alright, now Windows Movie Maker is done thinking. I'll do it for this one since I don't actually um, really need to convert this at all. All I'm going to do is just trim it. So I'll just play the video up to the point where. Uh, the thing starts. There you go. Trim. Get rid of that part. Alright, so I go back a few frames. Done. Trim some more off. Basically, just trim the video of any of the, uh, you know, random bits of nothing. So I guess I gotta watch this part until uh, it's done. There you go, that's the 1950s for you. I think this film was transferred in the 80s or 90s, probably the 90s. Alright, I found the end of the video. I'm going to trim that. Get this out of here. There, and now the movie's trimmed of any of the excess bits on the uh, beginning or end of it. First thing I'm going to do is save the project, because Windows Movie Maker likes to fuck up a lot. So I'll name it Muller Family Movies. I'll save the project, and now we'll save the movie file to the computer. You have the option to save it to a camera, but I'm just going to save it to the computer. I'm going to name it Mother Family Movies 0001. I might as well name that one properly. Alright, now I've named it and everything. You can choose the quality, you can choose it to fit a specific size and everything. If you, you know, if you choose Windows Movie Maker before, this is basic stuff. You can choose all the quality and everything. 
I think I'm going to do high quality video large since that's what it was uh, fed in as, so it'll look consistent. And there we go, exporting the movie Windows Movie Maker. Then you can do all your tweaks and editing and everything from the VHS tapes in Vegas or some other program that you use. And that's how to capture in a video from a VHS using Windows Movie Maker. Post-production is up to you. That's your choice. This is just how to get the video in there and trim it up for uh, processing. Like this one, I didn't have to put it in an external editor because all I had to do was trim off the ends, which you can do with Movie Maker without a problem. So this is going to be exported and probably put onto a DVD. And uh, yeah, have a good one, everybody. Ciao.